but this book is the epitome of the Taylor Swift line, I love you and it's ruining my life. sweet angels it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my August wrap-up part one I will probably be splitting this up into two or three parts because I read 25 books this month because I was on bed rest for the majority of August because I was in a bus accident at work which resulted in a concussion whiplash and lower back injury which meant I got to spend the majority of my days reading because I was only allowed to do half days at work so we had a lot of free time because it hurt too much to literally do anything else. But we're back. We got the sparkle back in our eyes. I only just got cleared to go back to work on August 29th. So we're now on full days, which is exciting because I was going stir crazy having to do nothing for the majority of my days. But I am a yapper, so without further ado, let us get started. The first book I'm going to talk about is Annie LeBlanc is Not Dead Yet. This is by Molly Morris, and I give this a four out of five stars. Every 10 years in the small town of Lenin, there is something called the Welcome Back, which is a competition where people enter in order to bring back a loved one from the dead for 30 days. This year's winner, Wilson, chose to bring her best friend Annie back, and before Annie's death, Wilson, Annie, and their other friend Ryan were inseparable but they had a big falling out and no longer spoke. Then Wilson discovers that there may be a loophole that could keep Annie back past her 30-day expiry date but she'll need the help of Ryan to mend their friendship and it's kind of the story of that. This was a really fun read. I think that it had a very interesting concept. I really liked all of the characters and I liked how they all actually had a unique personality and their own flaws. I think that every single one of these characters went through a lot of character development by the end of the story. I think the complex relationships in this were the best part of the story. I think that Annie, Wilson, and Ryan were so intertwined with one another but their friendship was so toxic. I do think that this relies heavily on the miscommunication trope. If these three had just had one conversation together, they would have been able to solve all their issues. I think that Wilson and her mother's strained relationship was really well done. I like how they were able to work through that by the end of the story. I was not the biggest fan of the epilogue and I do think that we are left with a lot of unanswered questions, but I did enjoy the book nonetheless and I give it a four out of five stars. Next up, I have These Deadly Prophecies by Andrea Tang and I give this a three out of five stars. This follows Tabitha Zhang. She is the apprentice to the world famous sorcerer Solomon, who is a fortune teller. When Solomon predicts his own brutal death, Tabitha must team up with Solomon's son Callum to discover who the true murderer is and clear both of their names. I think that this is definitely skewed towards a lower YA audience. I was left with a very lackluster feeling by the end of it and I do think that it was entertaining while I was reading it, but I don't think that it would be anything memorable for me in the long run. It was very fast paced. I finished it in one sitting and I did really enjoy the writing style. It was written in a way that it was like Tabitha was telling you the story, which I thought was very clever because it was kind of like she was talking to you. The biggest complaint I have about this book was the romance. I personally just didn't think it was necessary. I think that if their relationship had remained platonic, I probably would have enjoyed it a lot better and given it more than the three stars that I did. But I digress. It was fun while it lasted, but nothing special. Next, I read Lockjaw by Matteo L. Sorelli, and I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This takes place after the death of a young boy named Chuck in an abandoned mill. It follows the children of Burlington who believe that there is a monster living under the city. So Paz, with the help of her friends, are determined to kill this monster before it strikes again. This was a very interesting read. I think that the trans and the queer representation in this was really well done. I think that my biggest problem with it and why I only gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars was the amount of characters. There are so many points of views and changes in the timeline that it got a little bit muddled at times. I also would recommend looking up trigger warnings because it does get very intense pretty quickly during your reading. It is a very slow start to begin with as you're getting to know all of these characters in town, but it definitely packs a punch by the end, so I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next, I have The Beckoning Shadow by Catherine Blair. This is another one I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this one follows Vesper Montgomery, who has the ability to take your biggest fear. She learned the hard way that this can be a very dangerous power, and it caused her to go on the run and vow to never use it again. But then she gains a spot in the Tournament of the 
unraveling, which would allow her the opportunity to unravel her past. So she turns to MMA fighter Sam Hardy to train her, and it's kind of the story of that. I thought that this was a very intriguing book. It had an amazing cast of characters. Vesper was so interesting to me. I loved learning more about her and her backstory. I really liked how she had to learn to embrace her power and realize that she had the ability to control it. I also really liked the unique powers of the oddities. Every single one of them had something different that they were capable of, and I found it so interesting to learn more about those powers. I also really liked the dynamic that Vesper had with the oddities and the baselines in the gym that she was training at. They welcomed her with open arms and really worked with her in order to figure out how she could control her powers. I thought it was really interesting how their friendship started playing into the tournament and how that went. I will say that I do think at times it did drag a little bit, which is why I only gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars because like it is a pretty hefty book for a YA. But I still really enjoyed it and I would be interested in reading the second in the duology, but I don't know when that's coming because this was published in 2019 and it's 2024 and the second book is still not out. So I don't know. Goodreads says there's another one coming but I don't know when that's happening. The next book is a very exciting book because I finally picked up Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I read Crown of Midnight back in 2022 when I first had COVID and I just never picked this up and I finally did and it was so worth the wait. This is the third book in the Throne of Glass series. We're introduced to some new characters. Uh, Man in Blackbeak, I am looking at you. Abraxas, I am looking at you. I also really liked Rowan. I think his dynamic with Aelin was really fun. I also really loved learning more about Selena and her backstory. It was absolutely heartbreaking what we find out about her. I think that she went through so much character development in this installment, which was amazing to see. Also, Dorian's storyline in this was so well done and it ripped my heart out by the end of this book. There's also just so much world building in this installment and I can't believe how expanded this world has gotten since the first book. The ending of this book was so good and I really do need to pick up the next in the series. When will that happen? I don't know, probably two years from now like this book took but hopefully soon because I am really enjoying the series. It's just taking a little longer to pick up the books. I'm sorry. Your girl has things to do. I don't know what to tell you. Next up I have The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the second book in The Inheritance Games and I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I was a little bit disappointed because I gave the first book 5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely loved it. This one I still really liked but it was nowhere near the par that the first book was for me. This one did pick up pretty much as soon as the first one ended, but I think that this one dragged on a little bit more than the first one did. I felt like the first one was very action-packed and I was so invested in the puzzles and trying to solve it. There are many, many twists and turns just like the first book, so I did enjoy that aspect of this, and I do think that the turns did keep you on the edge of your seat, but it just took a little bit longer to get to those twists and turns, if that makes sense. I also just like did not care about any of the romances in this. I would have preferred if everybody was just platonic. I just want friendships in the year of 2024 apparently, but I did like the trying to figure out the puzzles again. And although we did get a lot of answers in this book, I still feel like there are so many unanswered questions, so I really do need to find a copy of the third book so that I can figure out what the heck is going on. The next book that I have is The Breakup List. This is by Adib Koram and I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Jackson, who is deaf. He is the stage manager for his high school theater department. He has written so many lists about his sister Jasmine's ex-boyfriends that it has pretty much turned him off of love. But then in walks Liam, who is a senior. He is the swimming captain of the high school, and he has decided that he is going to audition for the next school play. Jackson can't help being drawn toward Liam and he's enjoying his time getting to know him. But then Jasmine starts having a crush on Liam and so Jackson decides to take a step back once again and allow Jasmine to explore that. This is such a drama filled story. I flew through it in one night because I just wanted to know what was going to happen next. The book is rather predictable but 
I did really enjoy it nonetheless. I actually listened to it on audiobook and I really loved how Jackson's deafness was included into the narration. I think that the deaf representation was really well done. I really loved learning more about Jackson as the story went on. I think that Jackson and Liam were both such flawed characters but you couldn't help falling in love with them and rooting for their relationship in the end. I also absolutely adored Bodhi, who was Jackson's best friend. I would love a spinoff of his story sometime soon, so I mean, if you're watching this, Mr. Adib, I need it. You should write it. And then the final two books that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up are both by Trisha Levenseller. They are The Shadows Between Us and The Darkness Within Us. This was a reread for me, still a five star, obsessed with it. This one follows Alessandra Santos, who is the often overlooked second daughter of her family, but she has a plan to get noticed. She is going to woo the Shadow King, convince him to marry her, and then murder him in order to take over his kingdom, but she's not the only one who wants him dead. Like I said, second time reading this book because I wanted to be able to pick up the second companion novel, but still a five star for me. I still love Alessandra. I think she is so cunning and I really love the Shadow King this time around. I'm not sure if I love him more now or if I just forgot how much I love him, but he is a great character. I was hoping that we were going to get a cameo of them in the second book, which we did, and I ended up giving this one a five out of five stars as well. I just think both of them are so much fun. Like I said, this is the companion novel to The Shadows Between us. This one follows Alessandra's older sister, Chrysantha, and she has always played the naive girl in any situation in the hopes of furthering her status in a society. So when the story first starts, she has just married a much older man in the hopes that his poor health will lead to a quick demise, leaving her with his fortune. It's taking a little bit longer than she expected, so she decides to take matters into her own hands. And just when she thinks she is finally free from her abusive husband, a man named Eryx shows up on her estate and claims that he is the next duke in line to claim the estate. So she's got to deal with that now. And I'm just going to say this now, but this book is the epitome of the Taylor Swift line, I love you and it's ruining my life. You don't necessarily need to read the first book in order to pick this up, but I do think that it helps to get the full scope of the story and really understand Chrysantha as a character. I absolutely loved Chrysantha as a main character. I love how she just fooled literally everybody into thinking she was some silly old girl, but in reality she's a total badass who knew exactly what she was doing and it just made me so happy to watch her flourish. I think that we get a completely different side of her from what we experience in the first book from Alessandra's point of view and I think that it really rounded out her character in the end. I also really loved Eric's. I think that his banter with Chrysantha was so funny. They had me kicking, squealing, loving their romance. I do wish that we had gotten a point of view from Eric's as well because I think it would have been really interesting to see inside his head as well. But I do really love that we got the cameo that I wanted of Alessandra and Calias in this book near the end. I think that it was so great seeing them again and what they've been up to since the end of the first book. I personally just think that this entire duology is so addictive, so fun. Highly, highly recommend reading this one first and then jumping straight into this one to get the full scope. Really loved it. Both of them are a five out of five for me. I just think they're really fun. Honestly, Trisha is one of my favorite authors at this point. I'm going to read and devour everything and I personally think you should too. That, that's all I'm saying. I just think they're really fun. All right, everybody. So those were the first nine books I think I talked about in this part of the wrap-up. Next wrap-up will be up whenever my head doesn't hurt anymore and I can film a video and edit it without feeling like I'm going to die. So let me know down below if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!